Hello. Today I'm going to read a book to you called Moonlight, the Halloween Cat by Cynthia Ryland. Then I'm going to review the book, tell you about Cynthia Ryland's life, and describe an interview she did with teachingbooks.net. So first, let's read the book. The book is Moonlight, the Halloween Cat by Cynthia Ryland. Moonlight loves the night. It is her favorite time. She walks, soft and black, over the grass, along the fences, through the trees. Moonlight loves all the nights, but Halloween is her favorite. Things are a little different. Pumpkins smile at her. Straw laps welcome her. And children are out. Moonlight loves children. She follows them, but they don't see her. She is black, like the night. On Halloween, the moon is yellow and wide. Moonlight sits in a tree and watches it. Very late, the owls fly. Moonlight watches them. And sometimes, there's a rabbit. Moonlight walks the night. She sees lights going off in the houses. Now only pumpkins will shine. She sees raccoons on porches. She sees stars in the pond. She sees a dog in its warm little bed. Moonlight is a Halloween cat. It is her favorite night of all. The pumpkins smile, the stars shine. And someone has dropped a candy, a treat for a Halloween cat. The end. So this book, Moonlight the Halloween Cat by Cynthia Ryland is written for four to eight year olds. It is a 32 page book and was published in 2003 by HarperCollins Publishers. This book is about a cat named Moonlight. She is a Halloween cat and loves everything about Halloween. She loves the children, the pumpkins, and the candy. This book is a non-creepy Halloween book that is ghoul-free. It is written with a rhythmic style that purrs when read aloud. This book is the perfect combination of art and text. Now let's talk about Cynthia Ryland. Cynthia was born in Hopewell, Vermont on June 6, 1954. Her parents' unhappy marriage ended when she was four, and Cynthia went to live with her grandparents in Cool Ridge, West Virginia. While this happened, her mother attended nursing school. Cynthia lived with her grandparents for the next four years. Later, she and her mother moved to Beaver, a small town in southern West Virginia. When I Was Young in the Mountains, her first book was published in 1982. It is a picture book describing the joys of her Appalachian childhood, which earned Cynthia the American Book Award in 1982. The autobiographical tale caught the attention of critics and parents, becoming a reading rainbow selection. She followed with six more picture books before publishing the first volume in her popular Henry and Mudge series in 1987. She has continued writing and publishing more books. So far, 34 Henry and Mudge volumes as well as books for older readers, including young adult novels, story collections, and collections of poetry. In 1993, Ryland relocated to Eugene, Oregon with her son Nathaniel from her first marriage. In 2003, she moved to Portland, Oregon. Cynthia has written over 200 books. Now, let's talk about the interview she did with teachingbooks.net. Cynthia was asked, so many of your books feature animals. What is it that draws you to animals, both as characters and as companions? Cynthia replied, A lot of people out there love animals, so I'm in a big club in that respect. I think my love for animals stems from not having any brothers and sisters from what, or from my son being an only child. I remember when he was small, it was just the two of us. I wanted him to feel like he was part of a big family, so I started bringing home animals, dogs and cats and a hamster and a parakeet and a big tank of goldfish, and a guinea pig. 
whatever I could find to make him feel like we were not alone. There's something really great about coming home and being greeted by a pet. They're just so happy to see you when you arrive. And when you get up in the morning, they're really happy to start the day, which changes everything if it's just you living by yourself. For me, I really appreciate how much animals love life, and I think they help people love life more too when they're living in a house with you. Cynthia was then asked, Many of the books you've written for children touch on themes of comfort and reassurance. Cynthia replied, Comfort is actually a pretty good word for what I often try to create in my books, and I think comforting and reassuring themes resonate with me because I was so protected myself when I was small. I lived with my grandparents for close to four years. My parents had a really ha unhappy, tumultuous, short marriage which produced me. My father drank and he disappeared and never came back. My mother had to go away to nursing school because back in those days you didn't go to college to be a nurse. You went to a hospital that had a nursing school and you lived in a dormitory with other nursing students. She'd visit when she could, but she had to leave me behind. So in a way, I lost both my parents at four and a half. But this actually turned out to be a blessing in my life because the place my mother left me was down a dirt road in the heart of Appalachia with my two wonderful grandparents and an assortment of cousins and aunts and uncles. There were cows in the meadow next door, and there was a little Baptist church right over the hill where, where my grandmother taught the Sunday school class. I walked with the other children to the school bus in the dark every morning to go to the little country school. Everything about my world was contained. It was secure. It was predictable. I was very well fed. My grandfather had gotten hurt in the coal mine, and he couldn't work anymore, so there was a real problem with having enough food, money. But they had a huge garden, so I always had plenty to eat. For those years, I lived in a very nurturing environment. I don't analyze why I write or what I write, but I do think that being rocked in that kind of cradle where I had enough and I felt comforted and reassured probably had an impact on my writer's voice that made its way out of me years later. Cynthia was then asked, you've described the experience of writing as words flowing out of you like a river. Please elaborate on your writing process. Cynthia stated, I've never really had a plan for my writing. I don't really have a schedule. I still write the same as I always have from my very first story, which is to write based on what's inspiring me. Inspiration comes and goes, and I've done my best writing when I've waited for that inspiration. When I haven't done any writing at all because I'm just waiting to see what happens. I can go months and months without writing while I wait for inspiration. And the next thing I know, I'm grabbing a piece of paper and sitting down to work. I'm always kind of amazed when a book just seems to show up. It comes out of my head so fast. When I'm not writing, I just live a quiet life. I keep a sweet house and I've always had pets and I raised a child, but it's a quiet life. It's not a life under pressure, and I think that's also helped my writing. I always thought, well, I could go back part-time teaching if I have to, but I've been lucky. My books seem to be useful, especially for children learning how to read, and I think that's one reason most of them have remained in print. They're not thrill-of-the-moment kinds of books. They're more about simple experiences. I haven't lived an exotic life, so I'm not going to write. It's more likely to be about something with a cat. Something about me making a pot of tea. It's going to be about life at home. So as I stated, Cynthia has written over 200 books, so I encourage you to read more of them.